Harlan Bull. I say that name and I think PR. I think of the word publicist, producer, performer. He's an amazing man who graciously took out some time to come and visit us and meet the biz at Performing Arts Studio West in August 2016, August 25th, to come and share his adventures, his exciting life as a publicist, as an assistant, as, as a producer, with many legends that he has worked with, become friends with, family with. Well, today we have that interview for you to enjoy. We were all together then, uh, and we will be all together again very soon. But for now, sit back, relax, and enjoy this wonderful visit with Harlan Bull. Welcome everybody to Meet the Biz. <laughs> At the Performing Arts Studio West. Yes, today we have a very special person uh, who is just a sweetheart. Uh, Harlan Bull is with us today. Um, whenever I see you, you're always running, you're always <laughs> doing everything. Yeah. You are one of the busiest people I know in this industry. When, when do you have time to breathe? I don't. <laughs> I plan on starting very soon. Okay, that's always good. Yeah. That's always good. So, um, what, where were you born? I was born in Denver, Colorado. Thank you. And when did you move to Hollywood? Uh, when I was 18. Okay. I began, I actually um, went to the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. I'm sorry, to the, uh, um, the Academy of Dramatic Arts. Mm -hmm. I eventually worked for the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. Um, but uh, I was an usher in a theater a uh, summer stock theater called Elitch Gardens, the oldest summer stock theater in the country. And um, before my very first day of work, uh, Chris Kirkland, the producer, called me and said, uh, we lost our driver for the star of the show. My name was Bowl, last name, first one on the list. I had a car, it was better hours, better pay, so I took the gig, and I became Shelley Winter's driver. <gasps> oh. And Shelley, then Shelley's assistant left, and I knew the routines, so I took over. Mm -hmm. And then she gave me to Tammy Grimes, who gave me Marino Sullivan, who gave me to Gabe Kaplan, to Richard Kiley, to Rex Harrison, and a number of others. Wound up with Cloris Leachman, who decided I should work in Hollywood. Wow. So, wow. yeah. And Cloris has uh, Oscar and the largest amount of Emmy wins in history right wow. now. Well, uh, her, I, I, she's amazing. Oh, yeah. No, very, very, very talented. Insane, but in talent, <laughs> talented. Do you, talented. Do you, uh, and of course, I re uh, love her in Young Frankenstein. Oh, God, yes. Oh. I actually, she took me to, we were driving after we closed a show one night. She took me to a midnight showing. We were driving down the street and saw a midnight showing of Young Frankenstein. And we snuck into the back and watched it from there. And okay. she was telling me, okay listen for this, you'll hear me in the background. Or you listen to this, this is what's happening. You know? <laughs> and the people in front of us were not too thrilled that someone was talking behind them. And when they turned around and asked us to be quiet, they were in shock to see Frau Brucha behind them. <laughs> Who left my grandfather's book out for me to find? Yes! So that I would? Yes! Then you and Victor were? Say it. He was my boyfriend! <laughs> 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 I bet she gave a look to like... Yeah, it was very funny. It was just, he, he just was stunned, frozen. And then, for those of you who haven't seen the movie, that's her character in Young Frankenstein. Oh my God, if you haven't seen Young Frankenstein, see Young Frankenstein. Oh my God. So you came to Hollywood to do what? Um, well, I came as everyone else. Uh, Cloris thought I should be an actor. Um, I 
I worked a lot theater. I never. I only once didn't book a theater gig. Mm -hmm. My agent loved me. I told you that. Mm -hmm. uh, TV and film kind of eluded me. I did one film and did not like the way I appeared on camera and shifted gears. I became the last of the contract assistants at Paramount Studios. Uh, they assigned me to Tom Cruise for Top Gun and a few other projects, and you know. And I learned a lot, and I became an assistant to different artists, Valerie Harper, Lindsay Wagner, uh, um, wound up with Bob and Dolores Hope, the Carsons, um, and then the world opened up. You can't work for Bob and Dolores Hope and the Carsons and not meet everybody. Of course. Yes. Oh my God, I mean, the, the legends you have oh, worked yeah. with. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, people think I'm much older. I've I've worked with uh, every from George Burns on down. Yeah, you started when you were a fetus. Yes, I was a fetus at the wow. time. Thank you very much. Wow. So what is I see B Harlan Bowl. What uh -huh. is B? My first name. Okay, very nice. I keep that for my mother. I don't, <laughs> I don't care for the name, but I keep the B for my mother. Harlan's my middle name, okay. and it's my father's name, my grandfather's name, my great grandfather's name. It goes back. So I love that. Wow. I love yeah. that. And Harlan is so special. I mean, the name I think so. and the person. Thank you. <laughs> um, your biggest joy? Oh. Ooh, I should have asked for these in advance. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. That's what makes it. Uh, my biggest joy. Um, there's too many. Mm. Um, probably my nieces and nephews. Mm. Um, my brother says that uh, I buy them for Christmas. I would buy them something they need, something they wanted, and then I would go to the toy store uh, owner and say, I want the loudest, most obnoxious toy you've got. <laughs> Just to drive my brother and his wife crazy. Of course. So, yeah. Of course. I have something that I was, I was going through. I moved out of storage. I was paying 250 a month, and I said no more. So I got everything out of storage, and now I'm living in my storage unit. <laughs> I'm living in my storage unit, and I found this. Ah, <laughs> I've never seen this. You haven't? I'm kidding. Oh my God. <laughs> I was thinking you've seen everything. Every day of my life I hear this. There is not a day that doesn't pass by that someone doesn't call me and do their Carol Channing impersonation. Really? Oh <laughs> yes. Oh um, I've been with Carol for 19 years. Wow. And she's not my lo longest client either. Um, She's family now. She's more than just uh, right. So yeah, she's so many stories I couldn't possibly get into. She's still working. Right. She's uh, 95. Oh, um, nice. About a year ago, she did a show with Tommy Toon. I don't know if you know Tommy Toon. She he's won 10 Tony Awards, and we did it up at the Curran Theater. I say we like I was on stage. Uh -huh. um, we, we they were at the Curran Theater up in San Francisco, and she was brilliant. Oh. Brilliant. So there's no age has nothing to do with what, you know one's ability, and she's got dis, she's got um, issues of her own. She's had to work past. She's mm -hmm. walked off the stage more times than I can mention. Okay. Um, how many times was she, how many performances did she do, or how many? She did way over five thousand of, of Hello Dolly. Of Hello Dolly. She promised Yul Brynner that she would stop counting at five thousand because he did five thousand of uh, of The King and I. And so he, she promised him she would not promote after 5,000 <laughs> because they were friends. But she went way over 5,000. Right. And the rumors were always that she never missed a performance. And technically, she missed a half a performance. Really? In Kalamazoo. She was so sick, she was throwing up on stage. Oh, and no. she missed the second half. And uh, David Merrick, the very famous producer, uh, said, well, if you're going to miss a show, Kalamazoo's the place to do it. Oh, my God. Did somebody go on the second act, or did they just... I've always wanted to know who stepped in, but they never told me. Oh, how fun that would be. It'd be, be fun, fun to find out who the only person to ever replace Carol Channing right. was. Well, I, I mean, of course, I grew up loving this woman. Oh, yeah. And uh, one time, I've only met her once. Um, I was at 24-Hour Fitness. <laughs> and, and I was I was leaving. I had just got my you know pureed uh, protein shake, and I was walking out the door, and I heard this voice, mm -hmm. and I went, and I turned around, and there was Carol in a one-piece purple um, suit, mm -hmm. and she was talking to somebody, and I just tapped her on the shoulder. I said, "Thank you for all the joy you have given me." 
And she said, well, thank you. <laughs> but it was. Yeah. That, that voice is undescribable. She will call the office, and my associate will answer the phone. And she goes, just a minute, Carol. And I'll pick up the phone. She goes, oh, now how'd she know? <laughs> I'll go, really, Carol, it's not hard. Oh, my God. Uh, she fell into my life. Yeah. Uh, literally fell down a flight of stairs. Oh, no. Yep. She was on stage. During rehearsal, they only had that one light on. In the st on the stage and they had not marked the stairs yet and she was making a grand entrance mm -hmm. and she was on stage with Angela Lansbury and they had switched roles. Angela was coming in as, as Hello Do as Dolly and right. Carol was coming in as Mame which an was Angela's famous character and uh, on the stairs she missed and fell down the flight. Oh my god. Now I'd known her and worked with her before but this was really the beginning of our our long-term relationship and I had to rush her to the hospital and signed her in and they wouldn't take her. She literally fractured her, fractured her thumb, broke her arm, broke two ribs, oh. stitches to the oh. temple, and she still went on. <gasps> when the producers called me at the hospital and said, well, we'll make an announcement that Carol will not be, a, be appearing, she overheard it on the phone. And she said, well, why on earth wouldn't I be there? No, when was the performance? That no, the next night. The next night. But still, a yeah. broken arm, broken ribs, fractured. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, and I, what I did was I called Harry Winston, which is a famous diamond company, yeah. and I had them cover her cast in diamonds. <gasps> and it, oh. yeah, that's amazing. We had a ton of security around her, but yeah. Do you have a picture of that? Yeah, we do have a picture. Oh of my that. god. So it's uh, yeah. So and it turned out really well. And while we were there, they. She came in, and you could, if you have to be related for them to let you in past a certain point. And they knew I wasn't, but they just wanted me to say I was. And the doctor went, well, are you related? And, and I'm looking at Carol's nodding, like, say yes. And the doctor like, saying, just say yes. And I went, yes, I'm her father. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Carol didn't miss a beat. She went, oh, yes, can't you see the resemblance? <laughs> oh, my God. And the doctor literally just said, just go, just go. And as we got back to, as we got to the private room, the nurse shut the door and she went, father. <laughs> <laughs> it was all that I could think of at the moment, so. Oh my God. But we've been laughing, we have been laughing since and it's been nonstop laughter with her. Uh, yeah, that, that must be amazing to be around her. Oh yeah, yeah. She's, uh, she wakes up at 5.30 and calls me and says, oh, Harlan, is it too early? I go, yes. <laughs> she said, okay, I'll come back to Yeah, later. exactly. No. <laughs> she should do, 30 minutes later. Are you up yet? <laughs> so anyway, yes. Um, oh, I mentioned, what, you have two pins there. Yes. What, what are they? Uh, one is an Emmy. I'm the publicist for the Television Academy, Natus, daytime. And the other one's an Academy Award. Uh, I've worked on several Academy Award projects, so um, I got a, I was given a Academy Award and an Emmy pin, lapel pin, so I wear them. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Thank you. And your famous hat. And my famous hat. I don't know how that became famous, but it did. I've had it for as long as I can remember. Um, it, to me, they said it, it was, uh, I shouldn't wear it when I first started. I don't know why. They told me it was... Uh, it's, it's always they. The yeah, it's always they. They said, oh, no, you'll never fit in. You'll never fit in if you wear a, a cowboy boot and cowboy boots and Stetson. And so I, I, I quit for a while, but then I brought it back and discovered it was a great signature for me. Mm -hmm. um, I wear it. You, you can look, hey. <laughs> you can look at the Emmy Awards. You can see me walking through the crowd because I have my Stetson on or at the Oscars or wherever. You see me at whatever event I'm at, I'm easy to find. And uh, yeah, I have some actresses like Florence Henderson and others will say, will see me in, and say, oh, oh, don't bother him, his hat's on. Uh, it means um, I'm working, apparently. Right, right. We, we have another one of your clients here. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> another thing I've never seen. You've never seen No, it's many, many, many times. <laughs> that joke isn't going over well. Um, <laughs> This is um, this is Tippy Hedren from The Birds. Have any of you seen The Birds? Oh, yeah. oh my yeah. God! She's my. She tells me I'm her. We're, we're BFFs. Aww. Yeah, she is. Uh, I've been with her now for 21 years. Wow. Uh, Tippy and I travel at the world together: Vienna, Paris, all over. And she is uh, a joy. Um, 
Thank you so much. This is so cool. I don't think it's mine. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, up on a corner shelf in my office. That's right. Oh, he got it. Well, I can have her sign it. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh. Wait a minute. And I said that on camera, so I can do it. There you go. I have one, too. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, Tippy works with, uh, currently she has 57 li lions, tigers, leopards, cougars, animals out at a preserve. For 40 years, she's been protecting these animals. She's had over 250. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. She's an amazing. She's an amazing woman. Not to mention, she's the matriarch of an entertainment dynasty. 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 Yeah. Her um, daughter is Melanie Griffith, and her granddaughter is Dakota Johnson. Wow. What a family. Yeah. What a history. Very, very strong history. So she's a huge humanitarian, and she's done so much. She's had bills passed to protect the animals. Uh, right now, we're fighting very hard to get a bill passed that will stop breeding of exotic felines. Mm. Domestically, um, because they, they, people sell them as pets, but they never work out as pets, so they wind up selling them to uh, preserves or worse, canned hunts. Mm. And yeah, so they wind up drugged or tied to a tree and shot by a hunter for thirty thousand dollars. It's oh. a huge industry. It's larger. It follows gun sales and uh, drug running. Wow. So we're trying to stop that right now. I, I just, all that doesn't make sense to me. No, it makes no sense at all. None at all. For a guaranteed trophy, for a carpet on your floor or a, or a head on your wall. It makes no sense at all. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 tell, I, I tell some friends, sometimes I don't feel like I'm from this planet. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm, it's, it's weird. Um, but I went to Shambhala, uh, which if you've never been to oh. Shambhala, it, it's a place you you must visit it's amazing i mean they have day day trips so they have they have uh once a month they have uh safaris during the day you can go out bring the sack lunch um and uh, then they have sunset safaris which i just posted on my facebook um yeah. i went with barbara eden um and we had an evening safari that's when the animals are nocturnal they come out and start roaring um, and you, you have dinner and not much to drink. They don't let people drink much when you're around exotic animals. Oh, right. Here, so kitty, kitty, kitty. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, uh, well I, went, I went there with another one of your clients uh, who was the guest that night, Jerry Jewell. Jerry Jewell, yes. Yeah. I love Jerry. She's amazing. Oh, my heart. Uh, she, she keeps me breathing. I am. She keeps me on my toes, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, I've had a, a lot of clients go out there and do Q&As and try and raise awareness and funding out there. And, yeah. And she's one of the favorites, because she's the only one I think they've asked back twice. Really? Yeah, because the audience really, really loves Well, she's funny, and oh, she's yeah. energetic, and, you know, it, it makes for a very good evening. Uh, Not yeah. that the others weren't. The others were all wonderful, too, but... Well, she has this... Yeah. I mean, she, she is a comedian, she's an actress, mm -hmm. and I remember that night, I think it was the first time that she really connected with Tippy, and oh, yeah. all of a sudden it was like, <laughs> they were just like fast friends. Mm -hmm. Well, they both also have uh, cages in their neck. Right. Yeah. Tippy's got a, Tippy and uh, Jerry both have had surgery. I'm not saying anything that they haven't told everybody a million times, right. so um, I'm not disp spelling any mister, in, but they have cages in their neck uh, to keep their heads in in uh, in uh, Jerry's case, uh, she needs it. But she's had so involuntary actions so often that it's worn things down. And Tippy was on a set uh, where the set collapsed over a ton of water fell on the set. Oh. So yeah, and it, 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 yeah. The, the doctor said, "I have no idea how you're keeping your head up." So she now has a cage in her neck. So they had something in common. Wow. Yeah. 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 That Jerry. Yeah, and I think Jerry fell too. Mm -hmm. which was yeah, it, she so. fell as well, which didn't help at all. No. Um, you specialize, I'm trying to read this under Tippy. Uh, <laughs> you specialize in literary, liter I can't say that, how do you say Literary. That? Thank you. That's one of the words, you always have one of those words that just don't come out. Uh, personality, theatrical, nonprofit. Mm -hmm. So you do, you do it all. I do pretty much it all, yeah. There's been very little I haven't done, films and TV shows and mostly books. I love the written word, I really do. Um, I tend to give away the farm when I'm helping an author get the book out there because uh, I think everyone's got a book in them. I really do. Um, um, 
I love memoirs myself. I have two libraries at my house, and they're all full with books that have all been read. Mm. Um, and one, they're all signed, and one, they're not signed. But uh, um, I, I love I love working with authors. I'm an author myself. How many books have you? I've worked uh, with three. Um, the true. first one was a complete flop. The second one was a bestseller, and the third one was a bestseller. Though technically, I was the producer of the second one. Mm -hmm. It was a series of interviews. Uh, for a book called Portraits with 142 celebrities, from Jacques Cousteau to Elizabeth Taylor to Mother Teresa. Uh, oh, no. I got to meet the most amazing human beings with wonderful stories to share. And um, then the tel uh, TV, uh, Best in Television, 50 Years of Emmys. Right. I'm technically not the writer. I am the ghost-ish writer. Um, the, it was my idea for the book, but they gave it to Maury Gelman and Gene Ackes, who had been with the Academy for many, many years. Mm. And then um, uh, Merrill Marshall, the then president of the Academy, came to me about 19 weeks out and said, we're short, we don't have any interviews. We have all, the facts are all there. Right. And the history is all there and great photos, but we don't have any interviews. So they asked me to get 50 Emmy winners to do interviews in 19 weeks. I wound up with 65. And I, uh, I told them they couldn't cut anybody. Anyone I asked had, was in if they did it. And they did it. So on page six, I'm credited with the 65 interviews, with the, <coughs> the securing the 65 interviews. And I got Betty White to write the intro and Bob Newhart to write the forward. Oh, and, wow. Uh, so I consider it my book. What a life you have. This is so... Yeah, I've been amazing. very lucky. There's one, this video that I just love that's running everywhere it has been picked up. I was hand. I, Betty White got the Lifetime Achievement Award last year at the Daytime Emmys, and yeah, when she when you come off stage, you're presented with something on stage that's actually for television viewing. You know, it's for it's the presenter's Emmy because as you walk off, they take it from you, mm -hmm. and then you walk backstage and you get the one with the number on the bottom that's credit that is assigned to you. So if it's ever gone, stolen whatever reason they can identify it the number this number belongs to oh. um, and then I, so there's this wonderful video running of me handing that one to Betty White so yeah oh. a little piece of a little piece of entertainment history you know and I, I let me put this here I think I I think I left it at home but um, one of your other clients is I grew up watching every week Hmm. Uh, that could I, be a number of uh, I know. Well, I mean, you have so many. I mean, and the people you have are the people that I grew up with and uh, are still adore and love, and mm. they're amazing, is um, Julie Newmar. Oh, yeah. I mean, the it, Catwoman mm -hmm. in Batman. I was talking to her as I walked in the door, yeah. 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 She's, uh, I hope she could come someday. <laughs> yeah, I love her. Have you asked her? Um, I imagine she would. I she imagine would. she would do this. Oh, she's so she's so amazing. I mean, I had a, I had a crush on her. Who didn't? I know. <laughs> Hell, in that in that pussycat outfit. Gay men had crushes on her. Oh my god. <laughs> Gay men. Ev yeah, they, men. yeah. Everyone wanted to be that statuesque, perfect looking woman. She was with a heart of gold. She's very smart. Yeah. Brilliant woman. Um, she and her brother are just two of the most intelligent people I've ever met in my entire life, and her son as well. Wow. So it's just, it's amazing. And she can, she has garden, she has a rose and a lily named after her. It's rare to have a rose named after you, and even rarer to have a lily, and she's got both. How, who named it? I, it's, it's always done through a certain kind of uh, corporate, uh, the, the, I don't want to call breeders, what do you call them when they, Develop a rose or develop a, it's not a breeder, uh, it's a horticultural whatever it is, but right. yeah, they, they can submit a, a name and she's had one each named after her, so, and they're I beautiful. I love that. Yeah. So. I, I'm going to have to. I, I, my, I have other clients with roses too, like right. Phyllis Diller had a rose and Barbara Streisand has a rose, and right. uh, um, although Barbara's not a client. Um, there are a number of others that have roses named after them, but she's the only one with both a lily it, and a rose. It makes me want to go, I think I'm going to go on the internet and look up her, her lily and rose. Do. They're very <laughs> expensive, but yeah, do. I, I think so, because my mom loves roses. Whenever I go past a rose garden, mm -hmm. I all of a sudden think of my mom, so I think I might have to splurge mm -hmm. and get her that rose. Um, oh, gosh. Oh, who needs a publicist? 
I mean, for the actors and the performers out there. Why, why do you need a publicist? Well, um, assuming you've reached a point where you've luckily got a job, you've luckily put out a book, a CD, or something, then you need to make the public aware of it. Mm -hmm. Um, there are a lot of people who come to me and there are publicists who will take anyone just to take the money. Sorry. Um, I won't. Uh, if someone comes to me and they're not ready to, for a publicist yet, their their ducks aren't in a row or they don't have their materials, you know, ready to go yet or the contract isn't signed, um, I don't take them on until everything's, until I've got something to pitch, I've got something. Your entertainment trays won't even pick up uh, someone in a film until the film has distribution. Um, because they, they won't run stories till they know their public's going to be able to see it. So there's no point in hiring a publicist uh, until that point. Now, there is the, the companies will hire a publicist, like I'm working on Valerie Harper's new film, mm -hmm. um, which is wonderful if you get a chance to see it. It's what? called. Mom. Is it out now? It's, it's hitting festivals now. Oh, great. It's called My Mom and the Girl. It'll be at the LA Festival here. Yes. But in that case, we do start a little early because we want the festivals to pick up on it. We want the entertainment industry. The focus is strictly on entertainment press. Yeah. We don't do consumer yet. It's too early. Um, but for entertainment press to make sure that Hollywood Reporter, Variety, all of those are mentioning the film and that it's coming up. And mostly for voting purposes, we do want this to receive an Academy nomination for short. Right. So, you know, you have to start that ball rolling early. With books, you have to start, technically your publisher should start six months earlier. I always come on around four or three months so that the long lead magazines, some magazines can't, they, they, they pre-write their magazines, so they're four months ahead. Mm -hmm. They will work backwards, they'll start with the advertising and move their self up through the stories, and one of the last things done is the cover. Because the cover has to be the most breaking news. So they will literally work their way from the back of the magazine forward, mm. but they have to have it done four months out. I used to work for Playboy. Wow. So How was, long did you work for Playboy? I worked for Hef and Playboy for seven years. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was, I remember my first Playboy, my, I asked my mom, can you buy me that Playboy? And and the reason was Barbara Streisand was on the cover. Oh, okay. Uh, so oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then she got me a subscription to it, which... You know, which was it was a waste. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but no. hey, no, no. For the good Quaker boy who was working with uh, Hefner, it was very funny. I was working with a man named Dick Clark at the time. Oh, Dick, yeah, yeah. Oh. Do you all know who Dick Clark is? Wow, of was, course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the really truly greats, and uh, he and I were going to do KTLA morning news for whatever reason, and right. I pulled the car pulled up. On, at a light and he was closest to the mailbox and I asked him to mail a letter for me right. and he got out of the car he went over and I saw him reach the post, the mailbox and go and looked it over the car and looked back at the letter stuck it in the box got in the car and went was that to the Mother Teresa? <laughs> <laughs> and I went yeah we'd become pen pals she wrote the forward uh, she wrote the intro for one of my books uh -huh. and uh, we got that night there was a party at, at Playboy at the mansion right and Dick and his wife Carrie walked in, and Carrie later told me he walked in and saw me with all the playmates, and he went, he parties with Hef and play bells, play, he parties with Hef and pen pals with Mother Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> and he's Quaker. <laughs> oh my God. So yeah, it was, it's, I've had a blessed life. I know I've had a blessed life. I'm like hearing all these people, and it, you, I mean, you've known everybody, it seems like. Um, that's a rumor, but uh, it, I've known a lot. I see several of my friends on your walls here, Oops. Alan Cumming. And, right. Yeah. By the way, we have one of the co-stars of that movie here, don't we? Isaac? Isaac. Hey. There's Isaac. And what a brilliant star in the audience. See, I, I can't go anywhere. There's always got to be some star in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I love that film. I don't travel without a star. You're it today. There you go. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, when I say Emmys, what mm -hmm. first comes to mind? A lot of work. Mm. <laughs> a lot of work. It starts, I just did my walkthrough for the daytime Emmys yesterday, and that's not till April. It'll be at the Pasadena Civic. I don't think I'm giving anything away, uh -huh. but this next year. But yeah, we start way in advance. We're already doing the mapping out the structure and the show, and the director and producer are already working on the layout. Mm -hmm. And before long, we'll, you know, David Michaels will be looking for the presenters and talent, and we have to start way in advance. And um, 
it's a, it's a lot of work. And this is the daytime Emmys? These are for the daytime Emmys. Okay. Prime times are just around the corner. Right. That, everything's done for that. Right. They were having all their parties this week, their nominee parties and everything else. In fact, last night was the, um, the party for the daytime people for oh, Prime, okay. hosted by Prime Times. So. Right, right. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's an ongoing constant source of work. Um, um, a lot of Emmys are given out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have, uh, we figured over, with my clients, uh, there are over uh, 36 Academy Awards mm -hmm. between them, 150 Emmys between them, uh, 24, uh, 24 Tonys, and about 30 Golden Globes. Oh my gosh. So. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that, that's. You, you do get, oh, you do get, you, you do get jaded. That would be interesting to put all of them in a r one room. Just, <laughs> what, you, have you seen my photo on my Facebook? That you have? Yeah, they're all in a row on my desktop. Oh. The only thing that's not in the photograph is uh, a Grammy. Right. I don't know why I didn't put a Grammy in there. Right. Um, and because uh, I have several clients who have won Grammy awards. Yeah. And uh, I didn't put in a Gong Show award. Are you familiar with the Gong Show? Of course. Yeah. The Gong. I have a Gong Show award. It's not mine. But I have a gong show, yeah, I have a gong show award. Who, who was that? That was Doug. Oh. <laughs> See, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, I've got, to, I've got to go look. I, I was looking through your, your mm -hmm. Facebook pictures, and there again, I'm just like, oh my God. And I have oh. an uncle with a Nobel Prize. Wow. wow. Yeah. Heinrich Bold. He won the Nobel for literature. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. I, you know, we could have speak for a week, and you wouldn't. Yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> um, You'd get bored, trust me. No. no. Yeah, my spouse, I'll, I'll be telling a story, we'll walk in the room and go, oh, and leave. <laughs> will not listen if I talk about China. I used to be the, I, filled, I uh, toured China and right. became uh, an ambassador oh, oh my God. of arts and culture in China, <laughs> uh, off and on for three years, and so sick of the stories that won't even listen to me talk about it anymore. I think I was kidnapped in China. You were kid. Yeah. Wait a minute. Okay, now you got to tell this one. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was on my way from. Uh, I was in the Hefei province and on my way to uh, Liuchen, uh -huh. and passing through Jinan. And Jinan decided that w if uh, if Liuchen, which was smaller, was receiving American performers, so would Jinan. So my train stopped in Jinan, and someone stuck their head in my cabin and said, this is your stop, and fool that I am, went, okay, fine, grabbed my bag, and got off the, pl off the train with two other people, M uh, Mae Keller and Kathy Gibbs, and we realized something was wrong right away because there wasn't the fanfare, there wasn't anyone to meet us, there were no officials, and they whisked us away right. to a guest house, and I found out later they sent a message on ahead to our team and said, uh, we have three of your members, and we were, you know, headliners of sorts. Everyone's a headliner at some point, in, in some part of the show. But they said, bring back your cast um, for a show here. So it happened to be our one night off. We did two shows for 5,000 each. 5,000 people brought them in, got them out, 5,000 more uh, in and out. Right. And we did a show that night. I got a lot of attention because I was the only trunk they brought back with costumes. <laughs> so I was the only one doing costume changes in the show. I got standing ovations, not because I was talented, but because I was changing my clothes. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, and that night they said they wanted to hold us over for another show, but right. we had to perform the next night. So, um, we all snuck out. They snuck us out in groups, in little groups of two and three, mm -hmm. out to a bus that was hidden around a corner. We all loaded into a bus that drove down the side streets in the dark, no lights. An official stopped us climbed on board with a, with a flashlight, shined it at all of us on the bus, and talked to the, uh, to the driver, and the driver gave him a pack of cigarettes, and he got off and let us go, oh. and I went, my entire value has been <laughs> now oh a God. pack of cigarettes. <laughs> and we got to the train station and realized there was no way, Stetson Boots, I was gonna walk through a crowd. Yeah. And we had girl, one girl with her ha blonde hair down to her, her, past her buttocks, <laughs> and there was no way we were going to sneak through, so they took us down the train tracks oh. to board the train. I was the last with the producer and director to walk down the tracks, and I was singing Edelweiss oh. in Mandarin. Thank you for getting that. <laughs> 
I felt like the family von Trapp sneaking uh. over into Switzerland from Austria. And we got on the train, got to our location, and they'd been holding a meal for us because there was supposed to be a big banquet, and that's where I was one of the honorees there. Right. And uh, they served me, and now I didn't drink at all in my life, at all, until that point. And they served me a glass of something called Ouzo, which you know is like oh, 175 yeah. proof. And I saw my director and producer going, no, no, no. Usually they told everyone I don't drink. Yeah. But they somehow in the hustle of everything else, they forgot. So I just saw them and I went, never mind. And I'd seen the ceremony a million times, took the glass, tapped it on the table twice, Ooh. gombe to my host, because this is the tribute, and you have to down it. I still have no hair on my chest. <laughs> <laughs> it, I, I, uh, I finished a plate of deep fried scorpion and was asleep. Oh, yeah, the scorpion was good. It was very good. Did it taste like it chicken? Tasted, no, it tasted like peanuts. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do. I kept eating them, and I still have no idea who undressed me and put me to bed. <laughs> Now, when's that movie coming? Yeah, out? I know. <laughs> Actually, there is a movie. There is a movie of the trip called "By Way of the Rainbow," uh, oh. the Rainbow Tour. Oh, and that's yeah. It you'd have to hunt for it. It's but that's what it's based on. Yeah, yeah. It's the documentary. No, it's us. Oh. we're in it. Oh, it's a documentary of the trip. Oh, well, now I have to see. The, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You'll see me singing and dancing and okay. my early life. Oh my gosh, I love this. Magic Castle. You, you're yeah. connected to the Magic Castle. Yes, I, uh, I handled the Magic Castle itself for many years. Okay. Um, now I handle Ma uh, Magic Castle Inc., which is the production company uh, that puts on shows and movies and other things that deal with magic and illusion. Milt Larson, right. who is the godfather of all magic today as far as I'm at this time. Um, he was born in a trunk, literally a magic trunk, uh, uh -huh. his, to a magic family. And the Magic Castle is just one of the the most, oh forgive the word, magical places on, you know, to be at. It, it really is. Has anybody gone to the Magic Castle? Been there? Isn't it? A, yes, it's amazing. It's amazing to watch the, I, I will see someone doing something this close to me and, and not know how they, and I don't want to know. I right. really don't want to know how they do it. But I've been there with several of my clients. Um, uh, Florence Henderson, we were doing something and she was holding, they put coins on the back of her on the back of her hands mm -hmm. and she and he waved his hand over it and they were gone and they were on her elbow oh my gosh and you're right there you have no idea how that happened you know there are times we've done shows at the white house uh where unfortunately i was made privy to, to the uh, how it was done and right. i really wish i hadn't one of my favorite there's a kevin uh, uh kevin uh, not kevin uh very famous magician. He performed at the White House, and his, he has this wonderful, wonderful act where he saw someone in two, and I've never been able to figure out how he does it, and then I figured out, I saw him putting it together and saw how it was done, it just destroyed oh. me. I don't want to know, and costume changes, have you ever seen quick changes? Those people who do quick, go from a, a mini dress to a wedding gown, just by dropping tinsel over their head? Yeah. yeah. I love that. I love that. <laughs> it I is like what? Uh huh. Oh, the costume changes were that fast, really. But it's it's um it it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. I did a show once where I, I wish I'd known how they did that because I did a show once where I played several characters. Uh, it was called the Two of Us. Michael Frayn, who also wrote Noises Off and and other right. shows. Right. Um, it's called the Two of Us, and I played myself, my best friend, my son, um, and my wife. Uh, played my wife, my ex-wife, my um, daughter, and my ex-wife's new boyfriend. Yeah, uh, wow. costume changes Wait, oh like God. this. Yeah, costume changes Talk like about this. Sybil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you had to, there were. Con I went from a fat suit to Stephen, who was thin. Yeah. Barney was fat. Stephen was thin. Um, Stephen was well groomed. Barney was a mess. Uh, my son was uh, was son was a was a hip hop, you know, and you had to you had to change characters and change personalities and change costumes that fast. And we came up with some tricks to make it work. But wow, wow, yeah. it was uh, LA, a variety called it uh, the perver too much praise cannot be lavished. You you remember the the reviews? Too much praise cannot be lavished on Harlan Bowl. It was the he called it the. Uh, 
the proverbial Chinese fire drill. So, yeah. Oh, my, yeah. So, that was a long time ago, though. That's fun. I was younger and I could move quicker. Right? Oh, my gosh. We have to, like, break those barriers. Yeah. I wrote down the Smithsonian. Yeah. I wrote down the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, which you mentioned, and I also, mm -hmm. the National Association to Protect Children. Okay. Do, do, do. Wow. I'm an advisor to the Smithsonian. Um, I've dealt with bringing a lot of items into the Smithsonian. Mm -hmm. um, a Dolly's dress and, and Mame's dressing gown and the bugle and uh, from Mame and Phyllis Diller and June Lockhart who won the very first Tony. That Tony's mm -hmm. in the Smithsonian. Mm -hmm. um, a number of others and I've done several events in Washington DC at the Smithsonian and the White House. Mm -hmm. Um, my mm -hmm. mother and I have this ongoing joke, where the heck in the world is my son? Oh my gosh. She'll just call, where are you, London? Where are you, Vienna? Where are you, Paris? Where are you, New York? And the best yeah. one is, where are you? I'm in D.C. Were you at the White House? Yeah, how'd you know? She said, you're on the news. Oh my God. By the way, tell your mother when you're having dinner at the White House. So I can join you? Yeah. Well, she said, we, she, well, she said um, your father and I had dinner, sat down, turned on the news, and I went, is that our son with Obama? Oh. I was like, yeah, she could really tell us. Yeah. <laughs> so I work with the Smithsonian a lot. If you, if you ever head out that way, please visit the Smithsonian. Its history is phenomenal. Yeah, um, it's an amazing place. The next one's the Academy. Yes, I work with the Academy, have for years. Um, and uh, National Association to Protect Children. Um, my big causes are usually child and or animal related. Mm -hmm. um, uh, anything having to do with education. Mm. Um, the National Association Protect Children is was far a long time in the making. It's an advocacy group to protect to speak out on behalf of children who don't because they don't vote. They often don't get the attention from Congress. Mm. And um, there are and uh, you don't go. In, I'm trying not to go into the details. Um, there were. 30,000 reported cases of abused kids wow. from 85 to 90 mm. uh, that went unchecked. And those were reported. How many didn't we know about? Wow. Um, sadly, children are the biggest victim in this new world of modern technology because they are abused on camera and people yeah. pay to watch it. Um, it is a disgusting, and I could, I could give you stats that would just terrify you. In fact, Alison Arngrim from Little House on the Prairie, she plays Nellie Olson. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She's my faux sister. Uh, she calls me her brother, I call her my sister. She calls oh. my parents mom and dad, and she is the, one of the spokeswomen for that organization, because she's been through a lot herself as a victim, as a child, and uh, um, appeared before Congress and has done lots of things, and she will go through the material sent to me and block out certain passages so I don't have to read it because I will have nightmares. Wow. Uh, she protects me as much as the others, but um, mm. it's just it, the saddest commentary on, again, you were saying, I can't believe I'm part of the human race when you read that people do this. Yeah. And now there's new wonderful projects now where we're bringing in um, <coughs> veterans uh, who can't work for one reason or another or want to work. Um, <coughs> But they are being trained on computers to help the police. Now that we have the fund, now that we the laws have changed, um, it uh, we can find someone uh, through the help with uh, computers. Now we can find someone who's actually abusing a child online and get to the house while it's happening, as opposed to used to be you couldn't get there in time to protect the child. Mm. Now we can get there, and we use these veterans who are well trained. One of our veterans, I love him, I love him dearly. He made a comment once to, in an interview with CNN. He said, you do not want to see me at your front door. Because uh, if you're doing something to a child and he's at your front door, you pretty much are going to the hospital. Yeah. So it's, um, it's, it's, we are making great strides, but it's a long way to go. And children are just receiving the worst of it. Um, oh. Our ju justice system is not set up to protect kids or animals. Oh. They have no voices whatsoever. So people like Allison and Tippi Hedren, and you know, there's a host of others: jo uh, Joanne Worley, mm. uh, Loretta Swit, Betty White, a number of others that I work with who are very out there. Stephanie Powers, host of others mm. that are out there, seriously putting themselves uh, on the front lines to protect the kids and the animals. So, well, it's it's. <laughs>
it's amazing where I mean to see some of you, there are so many people out there these days that mm -hmm. you go what as we can see on TV every day um, lately uh, <laughs> where I won't go for the presidential race right now but um, uh, but you really come from the heart you and you connect yourself with a family that seems oh, yeah. to come from yeah. the heart. Now I'm I'm very very blessed in this. Age. I'm not without disasters. I've lost some wonderful. I lost uh, relationships and and people who've been killed and yeah. in front of me and uh, from uh, lost to disease um, um, relationships. Um, but so it hasn't been all, all joyous. But yeah. I've been very blessed in this industry and the industry has pretty much adopted me. They've been very, very kind to me, yeah. um, and I was lucky. I was raised in a family that was so supportive. I didn't realize how lucky I was growing up. You know, I grew up in a Quaker family, and I thought, oh, they're so strict. Mm. Um, but uh, I was very, very lucky. They loved me dearly, and my siblings, and we all get along. And I, this, this world, coming to L.A. was a culture shock bigger than going to China. I mean, coming to L.A., yeah. it took me a long time to get used to this idea that not everyone talked to their mother all the time. Not everyone communicated. I had a friend of mine who told me he thought Mother De Mommy Dearest was a comedy. What's the big deal? My mother did that every day. It was like, oh, real. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, it's so, it's, it's amazing. My parents now, 55 years later, are still holding hands, walking around. Of course, now with oh. her hips and his knees, they need to. Yeah. But <laughs> it's still, you know, they're still very much in love. And it never occurred to me, you don't get into a relationship forever. Right. You know, it never occurred to me that there are, I have friends who, what's the old joke for one child star to another child star? It says, um, this is my new dad. The other child star says, oh, you'll love him. I, we had him last week. <laughs> oh. You know, relationships are given up so easily out yeah. here. So, yeah. yeah. There are exceptions. You know, there's the Eileen Graff and Ben Lazzaroni and others who have been together forever. Right. So they do exist in this industry, so there is proof that they do. Yeah. They're just very hard to come by, and it takes a lot of work. So yeah. Question. Um, Answer. <laughs> what do you want the most at this moment in your life? A Pulitzer. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to write something that get that gets a lot of attention and makes a difference in life. Um, that I would love. I would love to. Uh, I'm working on two new books. Uh, one's uh, my first attempt at comedy, mm -hmm. um, and uh, then. Uh, uh, I would like to write something that would make makes a difference, that would stand the test of time, that would be in classrooms forever, and everyone would be, re you know, that would be, to me, the ultimate. Um, I, it's funny you ask the question. Like my mind went to all those those uh, beauty pageants, peace in the in the world. Um, but no, I I would love to contribute something that makes people think, yeah, and changes the course of of what we how we view things. Um, that yeah. would be the ultimate thing. Well, I have now. to say, you being here, and not just here, but you being here is, yeah. is a blessing. Oh, so, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I wanted to read, uh, j uh, to wrap this up too, I wanted to read a couple of um, quotes, testimonials. Um, which from? Um, uh, well, we'll f find out, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> which I thought were brilliant. I just read them and I got emotional. But uh, my elegant and brilliant dear, dear friend, I can't remember when Harlan wasn't there, and often with little notice. He has survived several tours, two husbands, and one memoir. I seek his wise counsel on just about everything and can't imagine what I would do without his guidance. Carol Channing. Channing. Yeah. Beautiful. And then I have one more I wanted to read. Uh, I was the recipient of a unique gift from my daughter, oh Melanie my Griffith. It was wrapped very elegantly in a smart man suit. That gift, the friend of Harlan Bowl, a publicist, has lasted over 20 years. Harlan is the pinnacle of patience and understanding the elegance of Clark Gable. <laughs> he has the capability of charming every single person in the world. Harlan Bowles knows how it all works. He knows how people work and who they are. He's loyal, honest, and I will always love 
admire and trust this man. People who know Harlan trust him for good reason. He knows the business of publicity. Tippy Hedren. Tippy. So, Harlan Bowl, everyone. <laughs> Get, I uh, like this. No, they can keep going. Oh, okay. <laughs> keep going. <laughs>